Space may soon become the next battlefield, and concerns about that new type of warfare is on the rise, with the U.S. government revealing it has intelligence that Russia is developing a nuclear weapon to target U.S. satellites. Lightsabers, laser cannons, and the Death Star, the hallmark weapons of Star Wars. But what if Star Wars isn't fiction anymore, but the next evolution of military prowess? That's right, some countries are working on space weapons that could rival the Death Star, such as molten metal cannons, rods from God, and weaponized asteroids. The ultimate doomsday device. About a Russian effort to have a nuclear-capable weapon in space. They say that it's designed to threaten and potentially knock out U.S. satellites. That could wipe out entire continents with a single push of a button. Sounds like something from a sci-fi movie, right? Well, these are not just fantasies, but actual projects that have been considered or tested by the US, Russia, China, and others. And they could change the face of warfare and the fate of humanity forever. The first space weapon we're gonna talk about is the Rods from God, also known as the Kinetic Bombardment or the Orbital Strike. This is a concept that was first dreamed up during the Cold War, and it involves launching large tungsten rods from orbit to hit targets on the ground at hypersonic speeds. Since tungsten is incredibly dense, its impact on the Earth's surface would release a terrifying amount of energy, perhaps even as much, if not more, than a nuclear explosion. But without all that messy radioactive fallout. But hey, not so fast, because there are some major problems with this idea. First of all, it would be extremely expensive and difficult to launch and maintain these rods in orbit. According to some estimates, it would cost around $240 million per rod. And that's not including the launch costs, the satellite costs, and the maintenance costs. That's a lot of money for a single weapon that could be easily intercepted or destroyed by anti-satellite weapons. Secondly, the effectiveness of these rods is questionable. According to a recent study by Chinese scientists, the tungsten rods would not cause as much damage as expected because they would erode and vaporize upon impact, creating a plasma jet that would reduce the penetration and the shock wave. The study also found that the rods would lose speed and accuracy due to the atmospheric drag and gravity. So in reality, these rods would be more like wet noodles than nuclear bombs. So the rods from God may not be the ultimate space weapon after all, but there are other options, like the molten metal cannons. These are space-based weapons that could fire streams of liquid metal at hypersonic speeds using electromagnetic propulsion. The idea is to use solar power to heat up metal such as aluminium or manganesium, and then launch it at targets on Earth or in space using a railgun or a coil gun. The advantages of these weapons are that they would be cheaper and easier to deploy than the rods from God, and they would have a higher rate of fire and a lower chance of interception. The disadvantages are that they would still require a lot of energy and infrastructure to operate, and they would create a lot of space debris and environmental pollution. Plus, they would not be very stealthy, as they would leave a bright trail of molten metal behind them. But if you think that's bad, wait until you hear about the weaponized asteroids. Yes, you heard that right, weaponized asteroids. This is the idea of using asteroids as weapons of mass destruction, by either diverting them to collide with Earth or by attaching nuclear warheads to them and detonating them in orbit. This would be the ultimate doomsday device, as it could wipe out entire continents or even the whole planet with a single push of a button. The scary thing is that this is not just a fantasy, but a real threat. According to some rumors, both the US and Russia have been playing with this idea, and China has also been eyeing it. In fact, some experts think that China may have already tried a weaponized asteroid in 2020, when a weird fireball went boom over the South China Sea with a force equal to 3.9 kilotons of TNT. So here's the deal with this idea. It's like playing Russian roulette with Earth. And trust me, the odds aren't in our favor. First of all, controlling an asteroid's path is like chasing cats in space. Gravity, solar winds, and other factors can change its course. Then there's the sneaky asteroid problem. It could be camouflaged as a natural object or a probe, hiding among the space objects. And let's not ignore the consequences. If one of these things hits, we're facing huge destruction, climate changes, and maybe even a nuclear winter. So yeah, not a piece of cake. Now, you might think that weaponized asteroids are the worst thing that could happen to humanity. Well, think again. 
China has been busy with another plan, one that could spell doom for the US and its allies. According to some rumors, they've supposedly snatched US technology to develop space-based weapons that can neutralize aircraft carrier groups and kill 90% of Americans on US soil. A report warns that Beijing has a secret arsenal of satellites, missiles, and EMP weapons that could soon launch a surprise attack like Pearl Harbor. EMP weapons use low-yield nukes in the air to create a wave of energy that fries electronics and may shut down the power grid. Following the EMP assault, a cyber attack would aim to cripple the internet. With no power, the nation would descend into chaos, potentially sparking rioting and famine. So if you've ever wondered what chaos looks like, this might just be it. A panel of experts at the Universal Peace Federation has now issued a warning on the growing threat of EMP or electromagnetic pulse weapons. But hey, at least we'll have a dramatic story to tell when the lights come back on, right? The task force says an EMP would result in a meltdown in the economy and society, which could kill between 70 and 90 percent, or around 295 million people. They wrote this report when the two big countries were not getting along because of the virus that Trump keeps saying is China's fault. They're quoting a piece from China's People Liberation Army PLA, newspaper, talking about using EMP weapons alongside cyber attacks and computer viruses. They're basically saying, hey, remember Pearl Harbor? Well, in today's digital age, the US is like a sitting duck for electronic attacks because everything from banks to power plants runs on computer networks. So if a country gets too big for its britches technologically, it's like putting all your eggs in the digital basket. Super convenient, but also super vulnerable. China's military experts reportedly threatened to use an EMP attack on the US Navy as a response to challenges in the South China Sea. They saw it as a way to disable ships without harming the crew, making it both effective and less provocative. Taiwan, on the other hand, is worried about China's rumored super EMP nuclear weapon. They fear an EMP attack could be the first move in a larger conflict, leaving them vulnerable to further attacks. While China's been playing with fire in the South China Sea, threatening to use an EMP attack on the US Navy, and scaring Taiwan with its rumored super EMP weapon, the US has not been sitting on its hands. The US Air Force has been busy checking and upgrading its vital infrastructure and equipment to make them EMP proof. The US government has also laid out some rules to make its systems and networks more resistant to EMP shocks. But the US is not alone in this race. Other countries such as Russia, Israel and even North Korea have also been pouring money and resources into EMP shielding technologies and bunkers. But these defenses are not foolproof, and they may not work when it matters most. The only sure way to avoid an EMP disaster is to steer clear of a nuclear showdown in the first place. So, as you can see, the future of space weapons is not very bright. In fact, it's downright terrifying. These weapons could pose a serious threat to the security and the survival of humanity, as they could escalate conflict, trigger arms races, and cause accidental or intentional catastrophe. Imagine a world where every satellite is a potential bomb, every launch is a potential attack, and every orbit is a potential battlefield. Not a very pleasant scenario, right? That's why many experts and activists are calling for a ban on the weaponization of space and for a peaceful and cooperative use of the outer space. Because space is not a place for war, but for wonder. And we should keep it that way. So what's your take on the matter? Do you believe space weapons will heighten or lessen the risk of nuclear conflict on Earth? Also, how do you envision space weapons shaping the future of space exploration? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video engaging, there's plenty more awesome content awaiting your discovery on our channel. Just take a look. Now before you head out, consider giving the like button a gentle tap and sharing this video with your friends. Subscribing to our channel wouldn't hurt either. It's a small gesture, but it means a lot to us. Thanks for watching, see you soon with more amazing videos.